Hey guys, it's Countess. I hope everybody had a wonderful, safe Halloween. Um, I definitely did. It was very quiet around my neighborhood, just a few trick-or-treaters. So um, that just means more candy for me and my family, right? I don't know if that's such a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, um, I just wanted to do um, an introduction to this video, tell you kind of like what I'm doing and like what my thought pattern is right now. Um, again, I'm just like zoned in on the subject, like all of a sudden ever since I've, so when I did that first Tara read, um, including the memoirs, um, after that, it's just been like coming to me. And then especially after I did the standing stone and then the Crowley, it's just like revelations, you know, and I'm, I may not be like the greatest card interpreter, but I hope I give you guys like an idea of what the cards represent. And then, you know, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle. And if you see something else, <clears throat> pardon me, if you see something else in the cards, please like, let me know, you know, um, I don't always get it right, but I try to take it seriously and I try to listen to my intuition and it hasn't failed me yet. I mean, sometimes you don't get answers and that's okay, but um, I'm kind of putting tarot to the side and um, I will come back to it in a couple of days. I just need to kind of like whew, get away from it for a minute because heaviness, right? <laughs> so I didn't get to finish um, in my checkmate video. I started with the first footnote in Masonic checkmate which by the way starts on page 92, not page 11, but nine plus two equals 11. So I had 11 on the brain. So I do apologize about that one. Excuse me, big mistake. And I just wanted to make a correction. So going forward, I put together like this little PowerPoint presentation to um, highlight a few of the footnotes and a few of you know some of the information again like this stuff needs to be exposed and more people need to know about it and they need to know that it's coming from the horse's mouth you know um there's no denying it so anyways i'm going to dig into uh, some of the footnotes in this video um not too deep but we're going to like go over them and then I'll kind of discuss or babble on like I do. So if you are interested, cool, hang out with me and we'll kind of go on this uh, journey to see and learn more information about the Beatles and this uh, conspiracy, especially with the ties to the, the um, Freemasons and all of that and how the Freemas the Freemasonic connection got the ball rolling. And we saw that in like without a doubt in that first tarot read, let's go down a rabbit hole. The high priestess showed up and the duality showed up. Twos everywhere, doubles all through that spread. So again, you have to like listen to all of these reoccurring messages coming out. So anyways, guys, um, I just wanted to give a little introduction to what I'm doing now, and I hope you like it. And let's uh, kind of discover this information and talk about it. If you'd like to say, you know, discuss something in the comments, I am like all for it. I would, I welcome discussion. I welcome comments i welcome you know even if you don't like me you know but if you're if you don't like me and you don't like this topic please just change the channel or go to your thing or whatever you know it's cool produce your own content and then you'll be happy but 
this is my channel and I'm so pumped that I have a few more subscribers um, and I'm just so jazzed about it. You know, even if I don't care about reaching like the stars with this YouTube stuff, I just want to get the information out and I want to look at this whole Paul is dead theory from, like I've said, from the supernatural and um, just esoteric and intuitive side to this whole story. That's my research contribution to, to, to all of this. And I hope that we continue to get more answers. So I will stop babbling like I do, and we will get on to uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I made. So I do hope you enjoy. And again, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give it a like, maybe put a little comment in my comment section for algorithm pump ups. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to like beg for it though. Every video, just throwing it out there now. So anyways, guys, I'm very appreciative of everything and God bless you all. Let's get into the slideshow. Bye. All right, guys. So we're going to kind of take a look into this wonderful, wonderful book, The Memoirs of Billy Shears, again, by Thomas E. U. Harriet. And I would like to, like I said, I want to highlight some of the footnotes in chapter 11, because chapter 11 to me is the most insightful of all the chapters. And um, I just wanted to highlight, it's like one more kind of reference to tarot, and that is on page 94. <clears throat> 94 equals... 13. <laughs> so, um, the numerology is just off the chain, seriously. Um, but it shows a picture of yellow submarine version of Paul. Um, I guess there, uh, there is, there is, or was a version of Beatles playing cards that were themed with the yellow submarine. Um, I would love to find something like that. <laughs> That'd be really cool to have a deck of those cards. <laughs> anyway, this footnote, it goes on to say, in the Beatles Yellow Submarine playing cards, the Fab Four each dominate one suit and are featured as its kings and ace. The suits are in the same as in John's picture, George is the king and the ace of clubs, known as the wands. Paul is of spades, which are the swords. John is of diamonds, pentacles. And Ringo is of hearts, which are the cups. Know your four kings and aces. Again, just... This blows my mind just being as me being a tarot reader, like the the way that this tarot like links to so much um so much in the supernatural um principalities that we have just no idea that are all around us every day. And I just like that. I love the connection of tarot. And I've got to say thank you to Billy and to Tom for inspiring me as a tarot reader and as a uh, reader, reader of um, this book. <laughs> it really, like, that's what inspired me to start 
sharing my tarot skills um, to see if we can like if I can shed any light and um, see this stuff from a different perspective. And so far, um, not so sure that we're like getting um, set answers. <laughs> Um, but I think we're getting insights definitely to the setup of certain situations with certain people. Anyways, I just want to go on to the next, uh, picture is of uh, page 100 in the memoirs that Billy shares. And again, I just wanted to show you guys the pillars. These are the pillars of duality. And if you look at these, they have, um, you know, binary code <laughs> on the pillars, um, the duality of zero and one, um, Joaz and Bose, black and white, you know, it's like, we all have this duality and it's a very, um, Gnostic, um, even like Luciferian, type um of perspective um just you never know when what side will come out <laughs> basically um anyways i just really like this page and i just wanted to highlight the um embolden uh words that make sentences on this page um it says, secret hand gestures suggest that we too have hidden truths, centered in me, revealed only in time to expose it in this tell-all book of Paulism. Paulism is Luciferianism, but with Paul as the Godhead. Um, you know, it's the idolization of the rock star of the movie star you know that's the whole thing hollywood hollywood is a druid magical wood used in many many rituals and people don't realize the connections that all of this stuff has you know with um programming the occult into the world and it's just amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Paulism is basically Luciferianism. Um, for more info on that, go see Mike Williams and his channel. He's got a lot of good information on the Paulism thing. Um, so the next emboldened words. Notice the symmetry. All of it passes right through Paul, centered in his heart. I am one in Paul. So again, it's the duality. It's Billy and Paul. Paul and Billy, they're like, think of the, the yin-yang, you know, and they're swirling together. Um, there would not be one without the other now, you know, and um everything that's happened in the last, what, 60 years. Um, it's amazing. And that's what the duality stands for. And that's what I think is so brilliant on this page when they show the pillars of duality. And then they say, I am one in Paul. You know, it's like the good and the bad make the whole one being. Very, very deep very very deep and i guess it also confirms you know billy's ties to freemasonry and obviously you know <laughs> our own secret hand gestures veiled meanings and all else on the album suggest that we too have made a fraternity or religion to convey hidden truths in our case it is a paul and it is centered in me as Paul's representative, having been revealed only in one cryptic symbolism until now, 
it is time to expose it as plainly as possible in this tell-all book. This book is not intended to recruit you to Freemasonry, but to simply increase your awareness of Paulism, a.k.a. Luciferianism, which Luciferianism to the Masons of the higher degrees, um, 32nd and 33rd, Luciferianism, that's when it's revealed that they follow the Luciferian doctrine, i.e. see Albert Pike's uh, Morals and Dogma for more information on that one. (laughs) Anyways, um, this paragraph is just really fascinating. Um, It says, We now welcome you to our own secret society, the fraternity and sorority of believers in Paul, complete with our music, images, mysteries, and secret knowledge. Did you notice any degree of Masonic meaning in our 33rd past master's track? 33 representing the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, which is the highest degree um, in that secret society. (laughs) There are like secret societies within secret societies when you get to the top. Yeah, so it is the highest degree There are secret societies within secret societies at the very top um, of the elite of the elite of the elite. (laughs) Oh my goodness. And again, you just go deeper and deeper and deeper with all of this knowledge. Just wanted to share that little, um, I kind of wanted to talk about that because it does um, go back to the high priestess. And we are talking about tarot in this chapter aren't we and so as a tarot reader that's kind of how i see it um i don't know if that's how it's intended to be seen (laughs) but it's how i see it and then so on page 99 (laughs) of, of the memoirs 99, you can flip it around and get 6-6. Six, six. 9 plus 9 is 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. So it all comes back to the number 9. It's like, the, it's a paradox. It's just like the never-ending mathematical <laughs> equation. Um, So I just wanted to go to um, 99 to kind of highlight on um, a little bit of Freemasonry and just the general information about what Tom puts here in the book about it. And you can see um, in the uh, sentences above the footnote on page 99, Masonic Checkmate. Over the centuries, they have become symbolic of the fraternities or religions that perpetuated them as symbols. In the States, it is usually it usually has the G for God. The great architect, geometry, gnosis, generation, or gatekeeper. And that is in reference to the square and compass with the G in the middle. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. (laughs) And you can notice we have the little triangle right next to the square and compass with Paul's arched right eye. I believe the right eye is the eye of Horus and the left eye is the eye of um, Ra, I believe, the sun and the moon. No, Ra is the sun god. Um... Horus and Osiris. I'm not sure. I'm very sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a little bit late right now when I'm recording this. So my... anyway, if you want to correct me in the comments, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> so let's get on to the footnote. So it says, compasses set boundaries for inclusion or for self-restraint and suggests that all truth 
can be circumscribed into one great whole. The builder square teaches exactness and to be square in our actions. The beetles, our compass, drew a circle of unity encompassing all who had ears to hear them. Outsiders, not fab enough to be drawn into their circle, were squares. So <clears throat> that kind of ties into the whole Freemasonic and mystery Babylon, uh, you know, the mystery schools for those who do not know the true meanings of these esoteric languages. They are called the profane. So <laughs> that's kind of a parallel there. So if you're not in the circle, you're a square. You know, if you're not in the know, you're profane and dirty. <laughs> so, and like swine. <clears throat> Entrance to Freemasonry requires a belief in a higher power. At the lower levels, while the God of Freemasonry remains veiled, a belief in any God will do. Initiates know that their G represents God the great or grand architect of the universe and geometry applied with compasses and squares, the measurement of the earth and all of the things in it. In this way, the G represents the connection between the earthly and spiritual aspects of existence. God and geometry are somewhat alike. As St. Bernard of Calavar which I totally butchered that word, <laughs> uh, states, what is God? Length, breadth, height, and depth. The G may remind some of gates and that the fraternity is a gateway that one must pass through for some of the world's most significant, significant positions. It advancing by degrees, Moving from darkness into Masonic light, one gradually places less relative sig significance, excuse me, less relative significance on either God or geometry and lose interest in the lesser meanings, growing in Ha Kabbalah, light and knowledge, degree by degree moving as close to illumination as we are prepared, the thing we learn to value the most, which is central to the upper levels, is gnosis, secret spiritual truth. That is the G that drives people into illumination. That gnosis is the generative and progenerative principle. In Genesis, Enki teaches us to be, to be as gods who progenerate according to their will by aligning their heart, mind, and strength with what matters enough to drive their action. Wow. <clears throat> I won't read the rest because of fear of copyright. <laughs> reasons and I don't want to give too much more away um you know you guys can pause the screen and read the rest of the page if you'd like um but it's very long <laughs> long breast and it's in detail you know it gives you an insight into us as a community of truth seekers of people who have been introduced to these in um, ideas from the memoirs are initiates into a secret society. You know, we're being told truths bit by bit. The veil is lifting bit by bit. And I do believe something is coming soon. They, you know, Billy said, or it is theorized that you know, Billy got a nine-year extension. That's what he says, the very first page of the book. He prayed for a nine-year extension so he could update the memoirs and take a tour. And then in February of 2023, something is 
significantly supposed to happen regarding Billy. We'll see what happens there. You know, I'm not going to put all my hopes and think that we're going to get revelations or that he's even going to pass away because I don't, I hope he doesn't pass away. I truly enjoy Billy and yeah, he's been the best McCartney <laughs> we've ever known. You know, he has been Paul McCartney longer than Paul McCartney was Paul McCartney. So we do have to give him some props in that respect. So I just want to sum it up, guys, with, um, I wanted to take a note with the triangle, with the I, you know, that goes back to the whole Paulism, Luciferianism, you know, the I and the triangle, the all-seeing I. And so anytime that there is, quote unquote, enlightenment in the book, that triangle with the I appears. So lastly... I just want to touch upon page 60. And this is 60. So alone, it is the number six. It is a very interesting footnote. You can see I have highlighted <laughs> a lot on this page. And I just want to read the emboldened letters first in the sentences above. I used reverse messages of Paul's death to tell the secret. And then we'll go down to the footnote. William's training. Actually, no, scratch that. We're going to go a couple of sentences up. Although Edison never played them backwards as much as forward, he was fascinated by the novel, but altogether different sound from the song reproduced in the right way. Many years later, Alistair Crowley had me listen to phonograph records reversed, attempting to train me in my early childhood to think backwards. Hmm. Tying into the tarot read we did, I did. Oh my goodness, this is just nuts. <laughs> the magician is everywhere in this story. Okay, so let's get on to the footnote. So it says, William's training to think backwards included, with great practice early on, learning to write backward with either hand and to talk backward. When it came time to create back masking, <clears throat> pardon me, he took to it so naturally with an unusual ability to anticipate what sound a reverse word might produce. As a child, he also became proficient at swiftly walking backward. William also notices what a world spelt backward might mean, such as with ram or ram and mar for a subconscious suggestion or to bring focus to one he might reverse the word order or say the opposite of something. And to pause right there, I just need to take a drink of something. My yummy, yummy almond milk. <clears throat> My allergies have just been like crazy off the hook this season. So yeah, pardon my raspiness. Um, let's get into this next next little bit here um checking or chasing such clues causes confusion and creates counter clues here is an example of a false clue to cause confusion if this note suggested finding official government documentation of paul's september 11th 1966 death by looking for his corpse indexed as Paul J. something, rather than as J. Paul McCartney. That reversal would be a false clue or counter clue. The, palm, the reader is not meant to find the record or the corpse. Do not follow such clues. Juxtaposing every riddle ventures into sub, subletities. Confused? That's okay. 
Sometimes clues draw people in too close to home. On a Mike Williams video, <laughs> Stephen Fauber discusses standing stones. Uh, men here. I probably butchered that. They marked the places for ritual, including Druid human sacrifices and burials. Stephen points out that if the stone on one of Williams' album covers is, as it says, Paul McCartney's standing stone, then it may mark a location of Paul's remains, or part of them. In a subsequent video, John and, and Jillian Lennox visit the farm in person. Others have also looked around. Whether the title is a dead giveaway or another false clue, it would be best not to make pilgrimages. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to close with. Um, again, just wanted to highlight a few of these fantastic footnotes. They hit a nerve. <laughs> if not, why would they even bother mentioning the standing stone? You know, the, it just makes so much sense. And after that tarot card reading, man, we are on to some, some truth and we're going to find it guys. We really are. I'm so like I'm with it and I'm with it with anybody who wants to go on the journey with me so that is all I have for today um I may be back this weekend sometime to do a tarot read so in the meantime if you have any comments or suggestions please drop them in the comment section otherwise I will check you guys later bye 2012, the masses will be where we are today, and Paul should be Jesus by then. I had a vision when I was 12, and I saw a man on a flaming pie. And he said, you are Beatles with an A, and we are Beatles with an A. Magic with a K.